We only found two tubes of trouble in Unit 2. We know that's not true because in early February you had nearly 900. So will you tell us today how many tubes in Unit 2, how many tubes in Unit 3 have wear of greater than 10%, and also how many tubes in Unit 2 and in Unit 3 have shown any indication of wear? So those are the two questions. Will you permit an adjudicatory evidentiary hearing on the safety of restart before making that decision? All right, Secondly, how many bad tubes are there in total? question uh, I'd have to ask Emmett for the exact count. I don't even know if he has the exact count. We, did, we do have that information and again that's part of our inspection activity um, but there were a significant number of tubes that had wear indications. The ones we talked about unit two were the two that had tube to tube wear. Uh, that is where the large concern. Now there was other issues on the other generators on unit two have to do with any unit three retainer borrower, which I also right. discussed. And those were measured and plugged uh, to address that issue. You didn't as plug as all of those. Specifics, I, I would have to have the raw data in front of me. I can't, I can't remember all that information. Right, apparently. Where will you publish that information? Yeah. Actually, we, we will publish some of the information in the inspection report, but I don't know if we'll go to that. We won't go to that level of detail down to 10% where. I, You're not I, even going to release I'll it then? Away, you don't uh, care about our safety? I'll take away our folks. Hang on. If you would, I, I promise it's Mr. Hirsch, right? That's correct. I, I just don't think, you know, there's, there's almost 20,000 tubes. And so that data, we just don't have it at our fingertips. We have that information. We just don't have it here to relate to Give us a rough I, number. I, they I'd said like to, two. To take away a commitment. Are there hundreds? I would, what, what I'm going to offer is to see if we can find a way uh, to, to get that data and, and put it on our website and make it uh, publicly available so you can you can, you can take it over. Would that be acceptable to me? No, you must know the number in rough terms. Do you have a thousand bad tubes in Unit 2? Or do you have two? Listen, uh, how about this? We committed to putting the information on the public website so it's publicly available. Um, rather than him approximating, how about if he does it right, he's made a commitment to do that. When? All right, hang on. Is this a cover up? <laughs> <laughs> I need to know now. Thanks. Thank you for the question. We will get you the specific numbers. When? Uh, as I, as I, just a second. I will share the percentages with you tonight. But please keep in mind that we've already mentioned that we measure on each tube, on each of the 9,727 tubes in each steam generator, we look for, there could be several wear indications as these tubes move through the tube support plates, right? Rough numbers, rough percentages. On unit three, 9% of the tubes in the unit three steam generators, so 19,454 tubes in the unit three steam generators, 9% of them showed wear with greater than 10% through wall indications, 9%. On unit two, 12% of the tubes wow. showed wear greater than 10% through wall indication. Let me share with you that compared to other steam generators, compared to other steam generators in the industry, those numbers by themselves are not alarming. The, what true. what true. is that's alarming, yeah, that's is, and the reason we are here tonight, is because of the unexpected tube to tube wear. We will get you the specific information with that, with those numbers. When? On unit three, we saw 326 tubes with tube to tube wear, greater than 10% through wall. On unit two, we saw two tubes with the unexpected tube to tube wear greater than 10% through wall. So we will get the information out to you. I'll get it to you, Mr. Hirsch. But for tonight, 9% of the tubes on unit three with greater than 10% through wall wear on unit two, 12% of the tubes. Yeah. Let me greater, just respond for a moment. Your full power plugging limit is 8%. So if those tubes continue to wear by you restarting, you're over your plugging limit. 
second point, when you say that this is normal in Unit 2, Victor Drex from NRC is quoted in the paper in early February saying, for Unit 2, the tube to support wear that we're finding so much of so quickly is very unusual. And that's why you need an evidentiary hearing where it's not just Ed Edison saying it, but independent experts before an independent body. And I'd like an answer to the question whether we'll get that hearing. Thank you. Thank you for your question. We're going to try to get it answered. We're, uh, tonight uh, is the uh, augmented inspection team exit meeting. I think if you've been watching the NRC at all over the years, you understand our processes. Uh, you might even know better than I do, for all I know. Probably. Yeah, but, but you know that the inspection process does not uh, provide uh, opportunities for hearing. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not defending that. I'm just being straightforward with you to let you know uh, that is the process we're in, and, and we do intend to follow our processes. I will, I will go on further to say, though, uh, that because we are so early on uh, in the understanding what the exact resolution of this problem will be, uh, that I, I cannot I, you know, say we will have a hearing. I can't say we will not have a hearing. It's possible that when we consider the actions that need to be taken by, uh, by Edison, that it will drive us into the hearing process. Uh, and so, uh, so I just don't know the answer uh, to it tonight. But the inspection process does not send us there. Just one quick comment. Elmo, your regional administrator for the region in which San Onofre exists. Here's a large number of people you're speaking before. All you have to do is say you'll go back to your superiors and recommend that there be a full evidentiary hearing. Will you do that? I, I, we, we, I have been back to my superiors and uh, with this question, uh, and we are in collaboration on whether or not such a such a hearing is is possible. So why would it you. not be? All right. Too embarrassing. That's, okay. <laughs> Brian Brian Crosby. All right. First of all, thank you for the opportunity uh, to have these sort of discussions. Um, it's my understanding that there is a, a nuclear plant in Ohio, Davis Bessie, that has uh, recently discovered a similar pinhole leak in um, that facility. My question is to the NRC, what effects will this have on the overall nuclear, um, yeah, the new overall, thing, overall nuclear industry? And um, secondly, uh, just another quick question is, when this facility comes back up, is there a specific percentage capacity that it will be operating at? And if so, I know you don't want to give specific timelines, but um, can we expect maybe a, a, a testing period and then a shutdown and then a full blown, um, yeah, bring it, bring it up. Yeah, full blown, bad news words, but full on 100% uh, capacity uh, startup. Thank you, Brian. Uh, again, David Bessie. Again, I'll do Davis Bessie with the last. Again, no decision has been made for restart, and those decisions haven't even been finalized. I can't speculate on what the power would be, uh, but there will be, if you look at the confirmatory action letter, it talks about a mid-cycle outage. So when we say mid-cycle, that could be two months, that could be three months, that could be four months. Again, that will have to be part of uh, the action going forward, but again, no decision has been made on startup. Uh, 